guys, welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be installing some more parts on my 2019 KTM 300XC. Um, the bike has less than a half hour on it right now. I haven't even really ridden it. I've been wanting to do all these things while it's clean and free of dirt and mud. So today we're going to be putting on the new Renthal 13 tube front sprocket, which is stock uh, gearing. Stock is 13. We're going to do the Super Sprocks uh, 50 tooth rear sprocket, which is also stock gearing. And we're going to do the DID 520BX3 chain, uh, which is an X-ring chain. Uh, it's gold. It's not gold plated. It's gold in color. Um, they do sell it in this natural silver finish as well. So we're going to be putting on this chain. <coughs> I got a Motion Pro uh, folding chain breaker tool, which I was told is a little bit better than uh, the other one. I, it's the same design. It's a little bit two dollars cheaper, but this is the one I was told to get. So we're going to use the Motion Pro chain breaker. Here's the Renthal sprocket. <clears throat> We're going to hold on to the stock sprocket just as a backup in case something happens to this one. And then this is the Stealth Super Sprocks um, hybrid sprocket, which is uh, aluminum on the inside and steel on the outside, and it is serviceable. It's guaranteed not to break, so you know we'll see about that. But <clears throat> we're going to get them put on. All right, guys. So the first thing that you're going to do when you're removing your sprockets and your chain is that you're going to remove the chain. Um, and what you need to do is put your bike on a stand like uh, the one that I have here and rotate your tire freely until you find your master link which has the quick release clip on it and you're going to use a pair of little pliers like this. They do sell special pliers that are made just for this but <clears throat> basically you want to go ahead and remove that by grabbing the rivet with one side and forcing the back of the clip forward just like I did there <clears throat> and then you can go ahead and pull it off the rest of the way either with the pliers or with a pick. So I got mine broken loose. And I'm going to go ahead and set this on the side here. Alright, so now that you've got your rivet link off, uh, you're going to go ahead and use uh, your chain breaking tool. I've got a folding one here from Motion Pro. Basically, you want to put it over the chain, unscrew your, your center section here, okay, and then put this over the chain, and you want to cover the rivet. I'm going to go ahead and Kind of just put that on their hand tight. And then you can go ahead and use. This is a 14 millimeter socket. You can go ahead and start forcing that rivet out. Now you do want to rotate this until you force that rivet all the way out the other side so that you can get the tool off. And there's the rivet. I'm going to set that aside. So now if you want to reuse this chain, you can hold on to these O-rings, I believe, which just fell off where I took the master link off. And you want to go ahead and drop your chain down. Make sure your bike's in neutral. brand new so I'm going to hold on to it but I'm going to measure it first. Alright so the next step in removing your chain and sprockets after you've got your chain off is to remove your rear sprocket. There's six bolts here that hold the sprocket to the hub. You're going to need a T45 Torx with a uh, ratchet and then on the other side you're going to need a half inch box wrench so that you can hold the nut that the Torx head goes into. Now that you've got all six bolts out of your rear sprocket, you're going to need to remove this rear wheel to get the sprocket off. And 
So I'm going to leave the sprocket the way it is, and then I'm going to go ahead and get uh, the axle nut off here on the other side so I can remove the sprocket. All right, so to remove the rear axle nut, I'm using a 32 millimeter hex head socket with a breaker bar. Now that you've got your axle nut off and you've removed your axle block on the passenger side of the bike, you're going to hold the wheel while you pull the axle and the axle block out of the driver's side. Okay, now that I've got my tire and wheel off, I'm going to go ahead and remove the sprocket and set this aside for further use as this is a very light aluminum uh, sprocket and as far as I know, it's it, I mean it's brand new. so. You know, I can always use this in the future if I have a problem uh, with my other sprocket that I'm putting on. Now that I've got it off the bike, you can see what this aluminum sprocket looks like as compared with the new Super Sprox hybrid sprocket that is both aluminum and steel. Um, they're both 50 tooth. They're both obviously the same size. They both take a 520 chain. Um, and this one, the steel one, has it's actually not rebuildable, I guess, unless you cut the rivets out. It is aluminum inner and steel outer, so it is quite a bit heavier than the stock aluminum sprocket, but being that it's got steel teeth, it should last a whole lot longer and be pretty much indestructible. It's going to add some weight, but it adds some bling factor as well, and the fact that it's going to be super reliable is also a big plus, which is mainly why I'm putting it on the bike. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the sprocket on the wheel while I've got it off the bike. It's a little bit easier to get to here. You want to make sure that you line up the holes and that the countersink, countersunk holes are facing the outside of the bike. Okay, now that I've got the bolt through the uh, sprocket and I've got them on there hand tight, I'm going to go ahead and snug them all down and then I'm going to get the torque wrench out and look up the torque spec and torque them down a spec after I get the wheel back on the bike. Alright, so now that I've got my bolts hand tight through the sprocket, I'm going to torque them to 26 foot-pounds in a cross-torque pattern. Alright, now that I've got the uh, bolts on the sprocket torqued back up, I'm going to go ahead and put the wheel back on the bike. Okay, now that you've got the wheel back on the bike, the KTM manual tells you to torque that um, rear spindle nut to 59 foot-pounds. I'm not going to torque that right now because I'm actually going to take this back off to install some axle blocks uh, after I get done with the chain. So the next step for us in this video is we're going to go ahead and re remove the front sprocket off of the bike. Alright, so to take our front sprocket off, since I already have the chain off, um, what happens is if I go to spin this off, it's just going to turn the thing. Now you can put the bike in gear and turn it, but you could mess up the, tra the uh, transmission internally. So I'm going to put the old chain back on, and then I'm going to wrap it around this rear sprocket here, and I'm going to hold the rear foot brake so that I can get that 17mm uh, bolt off of there so I can pull the sprocket off. And I'm just going to do that and then take the chain back off, put the new sprocket on. Um, but because the chain is off, I have to put it back on. There's no really other good way to get it off. If your bike has a circlip here, you can just take that off with some snap, snap ring pliers. This one, unfortunately, has a washer with a bolt going through it. So I need to put tension on that sprocket so that I can turn that bolt out. Alright, so now that I've got the chain partially on, as long as it's holding on to this rear sprocket and it's over the front sprocket, I can go ahead and hold the rear foot brake and I can get some torque on this bolt. Alright, now that I've got the uh, bolt and the washer out of the 
front sprocket, I'm going to go ahead and roll that chain off and then pop the sprocket off. So just easy as that, once you got the bolt out, you can just roll that sprocket out. Again, this one is brand new anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and hold on to it for future use. Now we're going to go ahead and install our new Renthal 13 tooth front chain. The part number on this, by the way, is 292-520-13GP and it's recommended for KTM, Husqvarna, Husseberg, and Beta uh, motorcycles. Now with these sprockets, you want to note that there is kind of a collar here. It kind of sticks out. That's going to actually go towards the engine. So make sure that you put it towards the engine when you slide it back on. All right, I've got the front sprocket on. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall my nut and washer. Okay, now that I've got the chain back over the sprocket, I'm going to go ahead and put my foot on the rear brake again, and I'm going to get this bolt started into the output shaft. Okay, now that I've got that front sprocket kind of uh, tweaked down just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and look up the factory spec and get a torque to spec. All right, now that I've got that front uh, sprocket on there with the uh, bolt kind of tightened down just a little bit, I looked up the torque spec and it's 44.3 foot-pounds. I'm going to just round that up to 45 foot-pounds. And again, I'm going to go ahead and use the rear brake to hold the sprocket still while I get some torque on it. All right, now I've got both the front and the rear sprocket on uh, to spec. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the old chain back off. I'm going to lay it out. I'm going to put the new chain next to it, measure the length, make sure I have the right amount of lengths, and then I'm going to get that new chain installed. Here it is, my new DID 520DX3. And in fact, the stock chain is a DID. I'll tell you what that part number is here um, in a minute. package you've got the master link. Set that aside. And then you've got your brand new gold chain. Okay, I was right. So the stock chain is 117 links, including the master link, I guess. The new one's 120, so after laying them side by side and counting, I am going to remove three links. All right, so once again, to go ahead and remove these links, I'm going to use my Motion Pro breaker tool. I'm going to count three links. One, two, three. I'm going to go ahead and get the Motion Pro tool set up. All right, my chains are the same length. I'm going to hold on to these two O-rings, which I guess they're called X-rings. My three extra links and my pin, just in case I need them. All right, now that I've got my chain cut to length, I'm going to go ahead and start reinstalling it by feeding it in from the top. All right, guys, so now that I've got the chain fed onto the bike, what I need to do is I need to remove one more rivet here so I can get my master link installed. All right, guys, so now that I've got my second rivet popped out here, I'm going to go ahead and open up this little package that comes in the uh, chain kit with your new master link. It has four O-rings or X-rings in it. Now that you've got the O-rings, you want to take your uh, link here, your new master link, and you want to place two O-rings onto it, one onto each shaft, if you've never done a chain before. And you're going to go here on the inside and force the master link through. And then you're going to go ahead and place two more O-rings. All right, last part, well, second to last part, you're going to take your new link here and you're going to go ahead and force it on to these pins. And you can use a pair of pliers or channel locks to force this on. Now, once you've got this link on, you need to force it past the end of the rivets. You can actually use your chain breaker tool here without the pin. You can use that to go ahead and force that side link back on. Alright, now that I've got the pins most of the way through, I'm going to go ahead and use my little uh, clip here, and I'm going to go ahead and try and force that on to uh, the new master link.
Alright guys, so after battling this master link for about 30 minutes, I finally got it on. The key here is that you need to really press these side plates together. And Bike Master makes like a $14 um, chain press tool that's not just a chain breaker, it's really designed to push those links all the way through and compress the O-rings enough so that you can get this quick link on. I've got it on now. I actually had to reuse the old one because the one that came brand new actually broke off. You do want to make sure that the open end faces away from the rotation, so it rotates this way, the open end goes towards the back of the bike. And there you go. Uh, I've got the new sprockets on, torqued all of these bolts, torqued the front sprocket bolt using the rear brake. New chain is cut to length, same as the original chain. And there we go. Job well done. Thanks for watching.